Yesterday, we discussed the YouTube comments. Yes. I was going to ask you about this. this. Because I talked to Martha about this too. And we had a great discussion on this. And we tied in, you know, Marcus Aurelius and and, uh, other philosophers and, you know, Seneca. She's reading a lot of Seneca. So we tried to bring in what do these amazing people think about gratitude, humility, and acceptance. And then uh, Dr. Paul Conti has a Lex Friedman podcast where he was talking about pride and self-esteem. And Friedman was saying, no, a pride is never good. I don't, I'm not proud of anything. You know, pride can lead to envy. And, and then, you know, it's because it's the other side, right? Like mm-hmm. if you're proud of yourself, then you may start to get jealous later and that could lead into ideology, totalitarianism and so on. So um, when I posted this video about why I went bald, right? Last, it's been uh, probably a year and a half because August 1st, 2021, I, I shaved my head. I showed the video on YouTube. I, I posted it and got a buttload of comments, right? And most of the comments were beautiful. Like, hey, man, you look amazing. Uh, that this takes courage and balls. I might do this one day. And then other people were replying and stuff. And then uh, there was one thread where the guy is like, you know, doc, you doubled your testosterone levels. You claim to have very high testosterone, which I don't. Um, and, 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 but but your your physique is not very impressive. And then there was a bunch of replies, right? So the guy's like, oh, because he doesn't strength train. Or he never claimed to have a high, very high testosterone. He just doubled it. Um, or, you know, and, th- and then there's a comment like, gyno. <laughs> he has gyno or I something like that, that right? Yeah. I was like, so then I showed this to Martha. And I'm like, this is very interesting. Because the fact that I thought about this, the fact that this triggered me in some way, is not something to ignore, right? Because what I would have usually done from my tyranny, self-tyranny, is like, oh, this feeling, let it go. Focus on getting your your A plus in school. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know what? Focus on, you need to publish this paper. You know, this is amazing paper that you're working on. Focus on that. Don't worry about this trauma, weird anxiety shit. Let it go, let it go. So I've always buried this stuff. Right. And even in the past, when there's so many negative YouTube comments, obviously, because that's the world, right? right? That's trolling and, 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 and sabotage, right? And then Dr. Paul Conti says, he goes, you know, a person can post on Twitter or YouTube or whatever, Facebook, Instagram, and just like take out his aggression on this person, right? So whatever you're feeling inside, the insecurity you're feeling inside, you go bite the other person. This is known as displaced aggression. So in rats, if you are measuring cortisol levels and glucocorticoid levels for rats, right? Because humans have cortisol and animals, they're known as glucocorticoids and there's different abbreviations. So if a rat has high glucocorticoid levels, which is stress levels, and he goes and bites another rat, they go down significantly lower. A primate... Like if you look at monkey physiology and you're measuring glucocorticoid levels in monkeys and let's say an alpha male just got demoted to number two because this happens all the time, right? There's different ways of doing that. And I remember in Sapolsky's book, there was a, uh, an alpha male named Saul, mm. S-A-U-L, Saul. And Sapolsky named all of his, uh, of his primates using Old Testament names, right? So there's like a... Um, there's there's uh, Saul and then there's um, Moses, Job, uh, mm-hmm. Moses is in there. Job is there and then others. And anyway, so uh, so so when Saul 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 better call Saul that one. When Saul got demoted to number two, the first thing he did was went and raped a girl, a monkey girl, and then went and beat beat the shit out of one of the beta males and took his food right away right away displaced aggression rats bite monkeys rape and humans shit talk humans troll yes it's displaced aggression so then the concept is when i read this it triggers something in me because i'm like oh shit maybe i do have gyno oh maybe maybe my my physique is shit Maybe I'm like not very good looking. Maybe I'm really ugly. Maybe I should kill myself, right? This just keeps, what, never, never the thought of killing myself. Mm-hmm. But, but you know what I mean. It can yeah. lead to that, right? That's the end, the, the nihilistic. Effect, yeah. Right. So now when I showed Martha, she was like laughing. She's like, 
I'm laughing at this, but this is also triggering me. Mm. This is really pissing me off. Like I'm really feeling this right now. And I was also feeling it. It's like, oh, maybe, maybe, the, right? Because a lot of guys in the past have come to me to ask, you know, how to get rid of gyno, how to get a good physique, you know, grow muscle, lose fat, the whole thing, right? How to boost testosterone levels and get drive and bedroom performance, all that. So I, I have this, I, I, I am in the system of insecurity because all the customers are insecure, uh, <laughs> right? I'm yes, in the system, yes. right? So it's almost like sometimes I think, did I start Afro D as an insecurity? Like is th the entire company is based on an insecurity? Well, Michael Jordan's goat level is also based on an insecurity, right? Right. Right. Like Steve Jobs may have been on an insecurity because he was adopted and let go of it by his parents. God knows what. Elon Musk might have I was an insecurity. Just thinking Elon Musk is right. Oh, right. Because he never had friends and, and right. like uh, the, the, the Asperger and, and Asper Asperger syndrome and so on. So, so now, like when you suffer from a trigger from someone's comments, and this goes to everyone, right? Someone may say something to you, you're ugly, may text something to you, I don't want to hear from you ever again. How do you take the concept of gratitude mm. and humility and compassion to address the trigger? I've heard this in many different speakers that I follow, YouTubers especially, discuss this exact topic because they deal with it on a massive scale, massive scale. And there's people that hate them that still hate them and they don't do anything about it. They don't even comment on it because they're just like, ah, I'm disregarding it. But they have, they hold that hate within for a person. And there are situations like this happening a lot in the new age YouTuber space. A lot of the guys that even you have hold, withheld some anger and resentment towards like the, the big names, like the David Dobricks, the Logan Pauls, these guys that a lot of people know and a lot of people hate on and a lot of people hate on, but they don't even share it. They just intrinsically hate on that person because they're in a different position they are. And then they're a public figure. It's easy to displace that anger on a public figure. So when they discuss this, it's something that they have to almost disregard but every one of them across the board have said the same thing. When they get comments, they always notice the, the bad comments. That's always the easiest one to, to dwell on. No matter who it is, they all see the comment. Like if they do see the comment, they will dwell on the bad comments. They'll have a thousand comments that are like, I love you so much. You're the best. You changed my life. You made me so happy. And they appreciate those. Those feel good. But the detriment of the negative comments outweigh the positivity of the supportive comments just just to, uh on that follow up on that joe rogan never looks at his comments yes and maybe five years ago maybe longer maybe shorter but around that he made a decision to never read comments and he hasn't read them in years mm -hmm. but then you have a guy like sam harris who went off of twitter because he just couldn't deal with the negativity in his mind mm -hmm. that was triggered by twitter mm -hmm. right and and sam harris is a guy who has the waking up app he's like he's written many books on meditation and being in the moment and and he's he's such a expert on like you know psychedelics and meditation and and just spirituality in general and if a guy like that could get triggered and leave twitter right twitter trigger trigger twitter, twitter trigger tr twitter trigger if he could leave what massive emotional trauma could be in these in this social media in these comments because he is trained in dealing with these things but he also couldn't handle it he would say something like you know um i would get these people misunderstanding what i wrote and i would try to help them and right. i would write these long things like hey this is actually what i meant but it would make things worse right so before you tell me how you deal with it and and the the gratitude self you know the gratitude and, and humility what is behind what do you truly believe what is truly behind the hate what's really going on when someone types gyno or your physique is not and for me you know, when I look in the mirror and I try to 
not be like so much metrosexual and so, you know let's 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 take a look at this situation from a gratitude humility compassion ghc ghc okay. i've been looking at a lot of situations this way from now on like the last uh, week at least rigorously and what do i do so let's say in this situation they came up to you say hey you're eating uh, you're drinking your own urine and you're you know exposing your your butthole's perineum to the sun <laughs> what's going on step 1 gratitude hey you guys really care about me and that's why you're asking me this question because you care about my well-being so thank you for caring i genuinely thank you for being my family for caring so much that you came and i'm not being sarcastic i'm being real here thank you for being part of my family for being with us today at our house and thank you for caring enough to say this because you didn't have to next one humility say look I don't know everything about this stuff. I don't know what perineum sunning is going to do to me. I don't really know. There's not really any science about it. I don't really know what urine therapy is going to do to me. I don't really know. But you know what? My friends have done it and they are very healthy people. They are in the men's health space. And I also know that this has been happening for thousands of years. And also I know that sunshine is great. from what i've read and from what i've experienced so why not get sunshine in all parts of the body and then compassion hey is there something i can help you with do you have any question about your health or how you're living day to day in your life and your relationships or anything that you may struggle with in terms of your emotions and your mental health if anything i can do I'm here for you always. If you had done that and if you address every situation like that even to yourself how the world would change. GHC. That's like free therapy for the world right there. Really though, man. Really. Yeah. Because you're in breath work. You feel quote unquote uncomfortable at the Hawaii Pacific Island fitness gym whatever <laughs> EIF yeah first one gratitude i'm thankful for being in hawaii on earth and being able to work out and improve my health and just be on earth today humility i don't really know if this shit is good or not this breath work crap i who knows but you know what i love it and yeah i will probably get made fun of or people will talk behind my back but you know what that's how people are and this is worthwhile enough for me to do this because i want to do it and maybe someone will learn from it compassion all these people i love them so much I care for them. So me being a beacon of change, a beacon of transformation, a beacon of weirdry, just invented a word, weirdry. That will help others get out of their shell. So someone might think this guy is the fucking weirdest dude in the world. If I do something a little weird, maybe I'll wear pink tomorrow because I I'm gay and I I want to wear pink stuff. and and i love being you know feminine you know what i'll just wear pink tomorrow because this guy is fucking weird there's no way i'm going to be weirder than him <laughs> so he's already taken the gold so you know what so maybe that compassion for them that love for them influences you to do that and you must do it for the group could that work or bullshit depends on the self depends on how difficult the ego is to break down for, for that you, person for you would it help oh yeah why do you not want to date girls who smoke cigarettes i don't like the smell the taste 
I just don't like, it just doesn't turn me on. Honestly, it's, it's not as much of this person doesn't care about their health, which is a turnoff, but from a primal perspective, maybe that person doesn't care about their health, but I was still attracted to them. It'd be hot. I've had girls that I've been interested in who haven't taken care of their health, but I've really cared about them and I really just had a deep burning passion and desire for them. Those hell and healthy habits didn't turn me off. I thought they would, but they didn't. Girls that smoke cigarettes, there's something about it that just doesn't smell good to me. It just doesn't, I don't want to kiss that mouth. I don't like the, the smell, the way their skin feels. Even younger girls. When I was talking to a girl who was younger, a lot younger, in her early 20s, who was smoking, she just didn't have like the the healthy skin that I like, the hair. Maybe it was just her in general, but that is more important to me in the short term, to be quite frank. Because yes, I could think of it as, yeah, maybe she doesn't take care of her health and I don't want to date that for the long term. You know, I don't want the mother of my children to have those kind of traits. But I've been with a girl in particular who didn't have healthy traits at all. And I still was like, man, I'm so into this girl. I had no idea why. I just knew that that's how I felt. What, what does she have? What unhealthy traits? She was just drinking a lot, oh, vaping okay. a lot. Yeah. Nicotine addiction, alcohol addiction. And those are things that are turns off, turn offs for me. Usually it's easy for me to get turned off by that. But sometimes with the person, with the right person, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. And yes, I'd like to change it for their own health, for them. But even with that, even with those traits, I'm still interested in them. Smoking is the one thing that I've never met anyone where I'm like, they smoke, but I'm still sexually interested in them. Maybe they're attractive, but just this, the way that just like their mouth tastes and like the way that their lips are and their skin, it just turns me off. Even if they're not smoking in that moment, there's just something about the smoking that just makes me kind of feel grossed out. And I wish I could say that it was more of a deeper reason of like, well, because they're not putting their, you know, their health choices and, but it's honestly attraction. It's just, it's just, I just don't find it attractive because it just doesn't do well for their skin, doesn't do well for their breath, their teeth. There's just things about it. Their hair, their eyes are very, usually very red. I've noticed too, with a lot of smokers, they have like redder eyes, which I just don't find as attractive. And there's just. A lot of unattractive um, side effects that come with it. Just like excessive drinking has those unattractive side effects, but it takes a lot longer. When you see some pretty girls out, you know, some young girls in their young 20s and they're drinking, they still look pretty. They still are attractive. So from a primal perspective, I'm like, I'm still attracted to these girls. I don't agree with their decisions. I wish they were healthier because then I'd feel more confident and better about them being a mother of my child. But I'm not thinking that far in the future right now. I'm just thinking about their attraction and, and that in the moment versus the potential of what they're like for the future. So that's the big thing about smoking is that it has such a quick change in their dental health, oral health, skin health, eye health, that it's enough for me to notice, even if they're not smoking in the moment, because if they're smoking in the moment, then the smell is the biggest thing for me. It just doesn't, I just do not like that smell whatsoever. It just, it just does not smell good. But even if they are some person who smokes, kind of, you know, maybe on the weekends, there's still a lot of the outlying health effects that happen that are just not attractive to me. And that is the, the real truth about it because it's, it's based on attraction. And for me, drinking, yes, I can tell that women who drink for like 10, 20 years start to get effects. They can tell in their teeth and their skin and their eyes and they just, and their body, of course, they have the fat in different places and they just don't look healthy. And I can just tell that they've been drinking for a long time. And yeah, that'll happen eventually. And I don't find that attractive either, but it takes a lot of time. Girls can drink throughout their entire college years, early adulthood, and still look beautiful and still look incredible. And they could be binge drinking every weekend, drinking a bottle of wine with dinner every night. So many girls are very addicted to alcohol. And of course, there's the emotional turmoil that comes with it as well. There's the addictive personalities, the, the the emotional turmoil that they have when they don't get their fix, when they crave that and they get in argumentative modes and they want to fight you. I don't think about that in the moment. I know that that's there, 
but in the moment it's purely based on attraction and smoking just has the least attractive because it's the most noticeable on what damage it does in the short term that's why i don't like girls that are smoking cigarettes because i'm not attracted to the way it makes their body look got it 